Hello and welcome folks to our podcast, Let's Talk Automation. I'm Vidhar Amin and the overall objective of our podcast is to simplify and decode the complex processes of automation. And in order to do this most effectively, I interview thought leaders across the world of uh, automation. Today, I am extremely excited to have Ahmed Eldeeb on the show. Ahmed is a quality assurance manager at Amazon. As all of us know, one of the... Um, leading companies at the forefront of all of our technology um, that we use today. In today's conversation, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about end-to-end -end testing across um, an enterprise, right? And without further ado, Ahmed, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Vida, for having me today. It's my pleasure to talk with you today. Absolutely. Um, so, Ahmed, it'll be really helpful for us to um, get a little bit of background first about, you know, you and your experience in the world of quality. Please go ahead and yeah. tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, right. So uh, I consider myself a bit lucky that I started in the world of quality uh, back in the olden days when the waterfall model was adopted. Uh, it was, a, uh, as we know, a slow process, but it was a good exposure for me to, uh, to know the brewing steps in did it software development. So uh, I was part of uh, the olden days where we had to work on an uh, uh, SRS document or software requirements document that were like 60, 70 pages and uh, full of UML diagrams. <laughs> uh, so it, it gave me a good edge into understanding the, the differentiation between a good requirement and bad requirement. And also we were part uh, participated part of the design inspection uh, rounds and uh, doing the full test development and post uh, uh, production testing and so on. So the, the water formula, while of course it's obsolete now, but uh, for me it ingrained uh, like a, a heavy muscle into the different activities of quality assurance in full depth, and and that's that was my starting point and traverse it into later on uh, into different management positions uh, after um, uh, several years and then exposure to uh, the past six years uh, was mainly focused on building uh, test automation infrastructure um, and, and test automation tools and, 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 and uh, helping like scaling the infrastructure and make automation more, uh, more efficient. Awesome, awesome. And I agree with you. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, when you think of how most large enterprises used to build software, it was way, way more monolithic and... Um, a lot of planning, a lot of planning. And I think now as we move into Agile, it's a lot more, let's crunch out the features as we all know. And, you know, while we do that, it's great. But at the same time, we want to make sure these features have quality. Otherwise, what's yeah. the point of having, you know, great product shipping out uh, if it's not working effectively? Absolutely. So I think let's, let's, let's jump in, um, Ahmed. You know, the purpose, like I said at the beginning, is to talk about end-to-end -end testing. For those of our um, um, listeners that don't know about end-to-end -end testing, why don't you give them a little bit of a quick overview on what it is? Yeah, uh, my, my favorite starting point when explaining end-to-end -end testing is started from the customer point of view. So uh, if we take an example of uh, food ordering uh, experience, right? We open your, your favorite food ordering app, you just select your, your lunch or, or, or meal, and then you place your order and pay for it. And while this takes like three, four minutes, but it, it triggers like a, an extreme processes in the machinery of the tech. Uh, first, you use the app, this triggers uh, the, the UI logic in, inside your app, which communicates with the API uh, behind your UI and that uh, APIs triggers uh, the logistics uh, uh, processes in, on the uh, service provider side and that logistics handles the scheduling and picking your order information, then sending it to the restaurant the restaurant receives the order, prepares something, and then acknowledges the uh, um, like the order is, is done, and then you you get it back uh, as a status in your app that your folder is on the way. So th this entire process is when we try it from from quality assurance perspective, from the moment the user logs into the app to the moment he receives his order is what we can call it end-to-end -end, uh, testing scenario, a real life scenario from the from the moment of start to the end. No, I agree. And I actually really like that example. You know, a lot of times when I talk to folks about end-to-end, -end, I typically use um, um, an online banking application, right? So you start with a simple web application, but then you don't realize there's APIs, there's a mainframe involved, and you're going to come back. And when you think of yeah. you know, a user, a user sees this as a beautiful, seamless transaction, like you said, done within two or three minutes, but the amount of technology infrastructure on the back that support it it's, it's yeah. really incredible. And some of these systems are just so old. Um, yeah. 
and it's st all stuck together, right? And a lot of people sometimes ask, why even test? And um, typically, you know, as, as you and I are, are well aware in the technology industry, the need for testing is extremely crucial because at the end of the day, all of this hodgepodge comes together and if it's just some small little thing is broken and not tested, all that if effort that goes into build um, goes down the drain immediately and everyone's then trying to figure out what, what goes wrong, right? Um, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, how to do end-to-end -end testing. You, you know, I'm sure in your waterfall days, in the early days of um, your career, there may not have been as many tools in the market to perform automated testing. But uh, why don't you give us a quick overview on, you know, what is the role of automation in end-to-end -end testing and how is, you know, people typically done it when no tool would have existed in the past? Yeah, actually, the, there are two, uh, maybe to start with the, the, the steps to make it possible, right? Um, because end-to-end, -end, as, you, as you mentioned, is very complex. It spans different applications you know, on the business side, and we are talking about the entire business process, right? And the, the, the main preparation that is needed first is the availability of the domain expertise, right? Because in different uh, companies, um, these domains are being handled by separate teams, so the, the first uh, step in the process is actually to make sure that we know first or we have a model about the business process end to end. We know what are uh, the next steps, what are the next apps in the process that gets, that gets triggered once we finish our uh, stuff and hand off to the next uh, one. So uh, having a clarity of the business process is one of the most important prerequisites for that. And, and that's, I think, was a backbone for uh, QAs to do manual testing on the end-to-end -end scenarios. They understand what are the, the, these uh, steps in the workflow, and then they have to do it uh, to, to derive, drive their own test scenarios to cover that. Um, and that's on the manual side, right? Uh, when it comes to automation, that's where things get more complicated. Because um, as I mentioned, these apps some, are sometimes running on different uh, domains and different tech stacks. And for, for the automation to be efficient in that domain, they have, there have to be a sort of uh, an integration between the different infrastructure to make that possible. Um, and and this, this is where uh, it becomes tricky. And uh, I think this is one of the struggles that is still not yet solved in, in, in the area of automation. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you, absolutely. It's, it's very interesting to see, you know, how companies are adopting um, end-to-end -end testing, especially when you start to think of agile coming in, it makes it even more complex with, you know, customers or users wanting to churn out additional functionality so quickly. But at the end of the day, you know, they're looking at one particular application that will in the back end be talking to a whole bunch of other applications. And from a business user standpoint or an end user standpoint, they're, in, they're engaging with the business scenario or a business process. They don't really yeah. care about the applications that support it. They want the actual, you know, end-to-end process to work as desired for them to meet their desired objective, right? Um, let's talk, I think, uh, Amar, you talked a, uh, talked a little bit on, you know, some of the challenges, but it'll be interesting to hear from you a little bit more on, you know, what are some of the challenges that you've seen and, you know, your teams may have seen uh, in achieving end-to-end -end testing? And ha have yeah. you found any solutions to them, you know, just, just to make the life easier for, for the listening community today? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, I think one of the one of the cases where it is not possible to get it tackled by individual teams. So if you are uh, involved in in the end to end testing, you have to to bring different teams together in one room, um, and that's exactly what I used to do in the olden days. Um, we we used to collaborate with with all the teams involved in the machinery uh, for the entire business process. And we, we do devise the testing scenarios together uh, and make sure that we have a, a well round of the, the, all the angles where we can look at the end-to-end -end scenario. And then we, we get these people in one room to do the testing together. Uh, so a group testing session was one of the important stuff that uh, not only important for running or executing the test, they are important for designing the proper test that exploits the right integration points uh, from, from an end-to-end -end perspective. Um, and, and that's, and I think uh, we've tried different uh, ways, like, uh, for example, uh, having the different teams communicate their own essential test cases that you can learn from them and integrate them. But that resulted also in, in um, you know, uh, a very poor understanding about the integration points, right? They, the, because plug and play doesn't work in, in, in that complex scenario of end-to-end. -end. You need to have like domain experts talking together in one room to design test, test scenarios for, for that execution. And then they handle the, uh, the execution in one testing session together. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, I agree. And it goes back to also what you said a little bit earlier, right? About that strong domain expertise that's essential in order to um, develop effective tests. Because, you know, I'm sure right. you've seen if certain teams would do this in isolation without taking in, you know, their business stakeholders or the actual users into, you know, into yeah. this discussion, you get a whole bunch of useless tests that come out that are not really testing the function, the, the critical functionality of the application. Right. And yeah. that'll eventually lead to a poor user experience, right? No one's happy at the end right. of the day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I'm because, I'm, because also the domain the experts, they are not only ex- experts in, in how their domain work, they are also experts in the kind of problems uh, they see in their domain. And that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's the creative part of the process when, when we bring them together. And one, one guy from domain A says, we, we do that and we expect the user to do X. The other guy from domain B says, ah, oh, but when you do that, it may trigger something problematic on our side and that end. And this is, this is the interplay actually that I saw very useful in doing like uh, testing sessions uh, from, from professionals. And by the way, they are not necessarily QAs. They could be uh, project, pro- project managers, uh, product managers from different domain. Anyone w- who have the domain expertise can play a role in, in, in doing like uh, this group test design and, and test execution sessions. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's interesting. You say that um, I was talking to one of our, clients the other day and they were talking about how they actually had their operations team like very very involved now in the in the quality process right and essentially yeah. trying to figure out how they can be a part of the process more integrated to the process because they see it as a twofold thing they see it one as a way to make you know their life easier having yeah. you know having no issues with faulty production systems but also mm-hmm. they they see you know their own slas get measured and when they see these impacts um, there's not much they can do on it. So they have vested skin in the game to build a better customer experience as well throughout the entire life cycle, right? Correct. Um, you know, Ahmed, it's uh, interesting. I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about, you know, scaling this. We talked a little bit about, you know, having teams in play together, various stakeholders yeah. in play together. But when you start to think about the vastness of um, enterprise technology, right, the age of certain applications, it becomes pretty complicated to get, you know, successful end-to-end automation done at scale. I'd like to get yeah. your views on, you know, have you seen organizations successfully do this or what are some of the limitations that you've seen and possibly, yeah. you know, some best practices to make this successful? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's actually a very important point because such meetings are very expensive, right? If you uh, bring in one room to it. 10 to 15 people from different ones, that's a very expensive meeting. And also it's very hectic to manage the time from, from different people. And also we need that to be repeatable, right? Uh, you don't want to um, you, you don't want to have the end-to-end testing like a privilege. You do once in a year or something when there is something critical that calls the need for. Uh, we need to make it like uh, a commodity uh, execution. Like you, you can do it every week. You can do it every month uh, when you do like major releases. And for that, the automation is a must. The, the critical part here is, uh, from my point of view as an experience, is the infrastructure because uh, we designed different apps in the process, uh, in the business process without um, forward thinking how they can interplay together. So we have inter- good interfaces in terms of the handshake uh, from development point of view, but uh, they don't integrate together for the automation to take that flow and, and execute the, the, the part end to end, right? Uh, and that's the problem here. That's one of the problem. We the different infrastructure uh, would make it would not make it possible for the automation to, to go from there. The second challenge I see in that one, uh, I'll try to, to talk about solutions for afterwards, but I'm just listing the challenges for now. And the second challenge is is the availability of, of the proper testing environment, because currently we still don't have testing environment that mimic the production to, 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 to 100 degrees. So you have limitations, right? You, you have something that you cannot do in your testing environment because uh, that particular app actually behaves this way only on production. So you cannot mimic that one. And that, that's, that's one of the problem, even, even for the manual testing. But if we can say that it has like a workaround manually, it, for automation, it's, it's like a blocker. It stops the automation there, it cannot go further. So uh, I think if we tackle the problem of unifying our infrastructure from uh, automation point of view, and also making testing environments resembling as much as we can the essential configurations that need to be, uh, that are on the production uh, necessary for these, our apps to work together, this will be like the first removal of, of, you know, uh, starting the discussion of bringing automation to the table. And 
Uh, I think the 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 starting point from automation perspective is to go to uh, which is something area I don't see much uh, popular in the world of automation is to leverage backend services in automation. So um, the majority of efforts I see automation are in focus on the framework on the CI CD pipeline, but I, I see little attention given to doing backend services that can manage your framework so that you can have uh, this kind of, uh, it's similar to the handshake we have between apps, but you can do it also on automation. In, in a sense that you, if you are in, in, in a different country, you, can, you should be able to execute your tests on my framework in, in another country through the cloud, right? If, if you leverage uh, backend services to, to do the same. And I think, I think that approach could abstract different communication challenges between different apps and make it possible to, uh, to connect the dots on, on the automation uh, side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'll go back a little bit to what you mentioned on the two of the challenges. Um, one, yeah. obviously, you know, I want to dig a little bit deeper on the infrastructure, but um, you know, on the environments, you touched a little bit about having the test environment, the production yeah. environment. Absolutely. I mean, this is the, you know, holy grail, if you can get them to match identically. But I yeah. think a lot of organizations today even struggle, in many cases, getting a test environment set up, right? A lot of companies, um, so today it's starting to become a little bit more commonplace to set up parallel environments, you know, with, te with the test environment. But what we're starting to see or what we've seen is, you know, businesses even today sometimes don't have a test, a proper test environment set up, right? Yeah. And I think, like you said, that's so foundational for any business, you know, any business right now leveraging technology, no matter if you're a bank or you're, you know, traditional, yeah. um, you know, retail business. Um, if you have any sort of online presence, it's, it's essential. You have the foundation, you know, of your test infrastructure in, uh, sorry, your test environment in place to at least give your yeah. team that ability to, you know, make sure stuff goes into production thoroughly tested at least once before the yeah. client has any chance to see. You know what's going on yeah. or what a mess it can become um, on the back end. Yeah. But I wanted um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more on your, your point on infrastructure. It'll be very interesting, Ahmed, if you could go a little bit deeper on you know explaining that to me in in a little bit more detail, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the problem now that um, currently you you require different apps to be able to execute the end to end um, uh, scenario from the automation point of view. And the problem is our the, the frameworks that we build are are designed to deal with one particular app. It cannot deal with the, with with the second app. So you cannot you cannot, for example, pass two apps to the to the framework and ask him to ask the framework to deal with it. Similarly, if there is also a problem in shifting domains in the business process, for example, you are placing your order from a mobile app, then you need to 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 alter it from a web app on the back end. So how can the, the automation shifts, uh, shift gears between the mobile app and then go to talk to the web app? Yeah. And that's, that's one of the, and also go back to the another, maybe a rider app on, on the other device uh, for, uh, for the restaurant, for example, and then the delivery guy, they, they have the app on the mobile. These, these shifting gears requiring different infrastructure and technology behind it, and the automation cannot deal with that, with that, with that uh, shifting between uh, domains. Got it. Got it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now I understand the, the different heterogeneous technologies, your mobile right. web mainframe or yeah. whatever it may be, right? How do you, how do you have a product or a, a framework yeah. that can go across the different landscape to deliver that end-to-end -end business flow? Yeah. 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 Correct. And, and you know, there are proprietary, com uh, proprietary tools in the market that do do it, but a lot of open source tools like Selenium in the market, like you mentioned, um, a leader, very, very good for, you know, web technologies, but then that's sometimes where, uh, many organizations run into that end-to-end -end struggle and they may have an yeah. automation for the web flow and then someone manually comes in and does the rest of the um, yeah. process uh, yeah. ma manually verified. Yep. Interesting. Correct. Yeah. Interesting. And, um, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, you know, proprietary versus open source, right? Yeah. Uh, obviously, when we look at testing, a lot of organizations see it as a cost center, see it as an area where they may not want to spend that much money in it, right? <laughs> um, until something goes massively wrong and then it's, okay, yeah. please, whatever we need to get this taken care of. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I've seen some organizations that are really valuing technology, put investments into quality upfront. Yeah. Right. Um, but I'd like to hear your view on, um, you know, proprietary versus open source and, you know, the investments that organizations should really consider when they when they want to, you know, become serious about technology as a key business differentiator. Yeah. Yeah. 
Actually, um, I, um, the the property software is very good if it's if it fits exactly what you need, right? So, and this is a problem I see when people are trying to evaluate whether to acquire a particular service, right? They 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 see like one angle of it, and then they, it doesn't fit their own use case afterwards, or the it's also maybe improve one part but not the other. Uh, so I, I would I would vote for the property one if it delivers one uh, for me i would focus on one use case or one ex particular feature like like ai it provides ai in in in, in our it provides robo tests for for one so i would i would pick my main focus that i need from that tool and i would go to the best tool in the market that provide that capability and i would i would work with it however if uh, for companies that are really wanting to build a scalable a scalable solution that not, they don't need particular feature but they need an entire Technology behind uh, behind uh, their their operations and quality. Um, the open source is good as a starting point, but also it doesn't provide the the all use cases you need. That's why I I would for, I would encourage companies to uh, to acquire open source as a starting point, and then they need to to build on top of it uh, like a, a full layer that suits their own use cases and their testing needs and so on because. The, the open source surely will not provide out of the box all the, the features uh, they have. And, and that's, that comes to another investment, right? Uh, are companies willing to hire teams responsible to work on infrastructure? That's something I see. Um, I haven't seen a lot, but I see it starting to pick up in some places where companies hire infrastructure team, right? They, 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 those are the people who build or focus all the time, all of their time on building DevOps uh, uh, pipelines and building infrastructure solution for the automation and also for uh, mobile apps and, and front end uh, and so on. Uh, so in that regard, having a, a focus team on infrastructure that can work with open source and they have to design their own in-house solutions or customization to that open source solution so that it meets their own, uh, their own needs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, thank thank you for that. It's always interesting to get different perspectives on yeah. open source versus proprietary, right? A lot of companies struggle with this, don't really know when's the right time to engage. And I think that was definitely some valuable insight on find the yeah. tool that works for a specific scenario, um, yeah. or a particular type of technology, right? Make sure it meets yeah. your specific need. Uh, a lot of times there are very few products in the market that do this and, you know, the, 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 the do it all, right? In fact, yeah. I'm sure no product does it all because you need to cover exactly. it for yourself, right? Uh, um, yeah, I think yeah, uh, that's that's the problem that uh, that could be root cause to uh, companies are not starting by having a, a solid business case for for yeah. their needs, right? They, they just you you hire someone and you you tell him go and do the framework and that and the team or the guy is under pressure to do something like in automation or whatever, so he starts to work and see like uh, shopping, do shopping on the tools and and do shopping on the tools with this world of uh, variations, it's very difficult to point out something if you don't have like internal understanding of, of your needs and uh, your business case. Yeah, I 100% I, I agree with that. And it is a great way to start, right? Clearly define what your goals are before you go ahead and try a whole bunch of patchwork because it doesn't, yeah. I don't think it makes testing come across very well either. And we've seen many organizations do a brilliant job position testing, right? Because they're going to clear, you know, clear goal mandate. This is what we're going to deliver. And the yeah. business will see this kind of value and everyone's happy at the end as it happens. Correct. Yeah. Ahmed, um, you know, we don't have too much more time, but thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I'm sure the audience had a whole bunch of insight. Thank you so much for sharing your views on end-to-end -end testing. And, um, you know, thank you at the end of the day for being a quality champion within your organization. Thanks. Thanks, Vedder. It was my pleasure talking to you today about this important topics and uh, wishing you all best of luck. Take care.